right. Tina. Awesome. Hi, Kelly. Hey. So to kick things off, um, you said that Judy Bloom was your North Star as a writer. So I wanted yeah. to know if uh, Margaret was your favorite of her books as a tween. Yes, I. Well, it was definitely the. Uh, it was the first one that I read and fell in love with, and then I read all of her books. Um, I also loved Forever, partially because I, I read it way too young. So I was like, oh, this is some scandalous stuff, <laughs> you know? Uh, it was the first book I read cover to cover in like one sitting, you know? <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I love her in general. I, I've loved her for years. I was talking to my aunt um, about it because she remembers reading Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret, when she was a kid. And the one thing that stood out to her all these years later was how the teacher mispronounces menstruation or yes. menstruation. <laughs> um, so I was wondering if there was another similarly very small detail that after all these years, you were like, this has to be in the movie. Oh my gosh, that is a really, God, w which one stuck with me? Um, I mean, I, I do remember her, actually there, there was one that didn't make the movie but I, I remembered it vividly and it killed me to cut it, but I, but I had to. But there's a scene where Margaret stuffs her bra with cotton balls. And there's something about, and it's just, it's right before she goes to the party and it's just like three cotton balls on each side. And there's something about how like small that is. <laughs> it's just like, which I just found so funny and sweet, you know, that she just wanted yeah. just that much, like at least something, you know? Um, but I, we ended up having to cut that. But yeah, that's been in my mind all these years. That kind of brings me to my question of when you were making this movie, obviously it has such a personal connection to you. So do you feel like you approached it as the movie that your 14, 12 year old self would have made or the movie that you wish you could go back in time and show that younger you? Mm. Oh, what a good question. Both, both in a way, you know, um, I, I made it for, you know, I, both younger me and also me this age, because part of what was important to me was giving, giving uh, Barb, Rachel McAdams' character, a real arc and real sort of meat on the bone for her character, and the same thing for Sylvia. So I, you know, I wanted it to be something where you not only relate to how you felt as a kid, but you're also, you also relate to, um, you know, on a more immediate level to what Barb's going through. I was going to ask because the parents, the depth of the parents' character seems like the, the strongest um, difference between the book and the movie. It, it so is. So was yeah. that just because of where you are now that that's how it came out? Yeah, it's, it's because um, when I reread the book as an adult, I was interested in Barb. And when I, you know, when I read it as a kid, I had I was oblivious to the parents, did not care at all. Um, and um, yeah, when I reread it as an adult, I I thought, oh, she's is, she's is an interesting lady, and she's this artist, and now she's moved to the suburbs, and she doesn't really fit in there, and the other mothers are kind of raising their eyebrows at her and stuff like that. And that was it was interesting to me to think about what like what would happen if we went deeper on that story and. Um, yeah. So I read Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret for the first time this week. I had never read it as a kid. Oh my gosh, that's <laughs> great. <laughs> but I was immediately struck by how it felt like it was something that I could have just picked up from a modern uh, author today. Yes. So what do you think it is about Judy Bloom's writing that remains so timeless? And was there ever a moment where you thought you would take this story to the 21st century? Yeah, I, well, f first of all, I think she wrote in a way that was just so honest and so, and so specific too. The details are so right and so real. That's what makes it feel timeless and, and universal. And also I think she captures the feelings of this age like perfectly. That is it. That is all the complicated feelings like encapsulated in one book. Did you ever think about bringing Margaret to the world of TikTok and iPhones or no? <laughs> no, never, 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 <laughs> never, never. Oh God, think about how 
Oh, that it just makes me sad to even think about it. Yeah. yeah. Um, so The Edge of Seventeen was another film that I loved, and I really feel like you don't get Nadine without somebody who grew up on um, Margaret. Do you feel like they're kindred spirits in some way? You know, I think I do. I do. I mean, I on some level they're both they're both dealing with insecurities and like self-consciousness, you mm -hmm. know, I, I, each in their own individual ways. Um, but there is that common thread. So what was it about Abby's audition that screamed Margaret to you? Was it the Margaret that you pictured when you were younger or just a brand new version of her? You know, it's, I, oddly enough, I never pictured Margaret. I could just sort of feel her. And I think on some level, um, I think when I read the story, I projected myself on her, you know? So I, I yeah. Um, but um, when Abby when Abby walked in and auditioned, it was just like, she just blew all her socks off. She was so funny. Um, she, uh, there was something about her where you just, you just root for her, you know? You just like, you just want her to be okay. You know, you don't want anything bad to happen to her. And, um, and, she also had a really incredible ability at her age to just think on her feet and improvise. And I like to do a lot of that um, on set I, uh, to keep the scene fresh and to keep everybody really present and alive. Um, I like to say, okay, forget your lines and now just let's get the scene and, um, in a new way. Was that hard to do with a source material that is so personal to you and like so revered? Uh, Yes and no, because I think if you would hear the exact line, but if you heard it in a way that felt stale, that would be much worse than hearing an, an alternate version that just feels like it rolls off somebody's tongue and it's real. So what was it like to send that first email to Judy Bloom? Were you just terrified and just hoping for the best? Or can you talk me through those emotions that led you uh, through yes. that? <laughs> well, first of all, I think there's no email I've ever like written, wrote and rewrote more times, you know, and was like, is it perfect um, than that one? And then when I sent it, I honestly was like, I think it's probably going into a black hole. I mean, so many people write her emails, like there's no way she's gonna write back. Um, but then the next day, I had an email from her in my inbox, and I will never forget how weird it was to see the name Judy Bloom in my like Gmail <laughs> inbox. I was like, what? This is nuts. This is just nuts. Um, so yeah, and, and then now to have worked with her for a number of years, it's still, I can't, it's like my brain can't quite process it. Like 11 year old me and me now, it's like I can't, I can't believe, I can't believe it. It's just yeah. wild. That's incredible. Um, speaking of 11-year-old you, is there one piece of information or just one reassurance that you wish that you could go back and, and give to her as she's sitting there reading this book? Uh, I think I just, w I, I, would want, I would want to tell her it's all gonna be okay and you're not the only one and it'll get better and one day you'll laugh, you know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, thank you so much. Those were all my questions. It's a sweet, fantastic film, and I can't wait for everyone to see it. Oh, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so much. Thank you. So appreciate it.